Hello students, so today we are going to study Newton's laws of motion in the chapter Newton's laws of motion. So there are three laws of motion, Newton's first law, Newton's second law, Newton's third law. So in this video we are going to build a concept about the Newton's laws of motion. So I am starting with Newton's first law of motion. Newton's first law. So according to Newton's first law of motion, this Newton's first law of motion is uh, also known as law of inertia first law of motion so according to newton's first law of motion if any object is initially in the state of rest rest means if the velocity of the object is equal to zero velocity is equal to zero means object is in the state of rest or velocity v is equal to constant then i will say the object is in uniform motion. If these two conditions are satisfied, then there will be net external force acting on the system which is equal to zero. So this is basically Newton's first law. If the net external force acting on a system is equal to zero, then object will be either in the state of rest or object will be either in the state of uniform motion. Now what will happen if the net external force is equal to or the net external force is not equal to zero. So when the net external force is not equal to zero, we come into the Newton's second law of motion. So let us move to the Newton's second law of motion. Okay. Newton's second law of motion. So Newton's second law of motion states that if net external force is not equal to zero, then what will be happen? Okay, here the net external force is equal to zero. Here the net external force is not equal to zero. So if there will be net external force acting on a system or any particle or any object, there will be change in momentum with respect to time. So according to Newton's second law of motion, if net external force act is acting on the system, then the rate of change of momentum of the particle, rate of change of momentum means change in momentum with respect to time delta p upon delta t where delta p is giving you the change in momentum okay delta p is giving you the change in momentum p final minus v initial in vector form i'm writing because momentum and force both are the vector quantity and vector quantity are treated as a special quantity we are putting one arrow so net external force will be directly proportional to delta P by delta T. Where delta P is the change in momentum. Final momentum, linear momentum minus initial momentum and delta T is giving you the time interval during which this change in momentum is taking place or taken place. So delta T is basically T2 minus T1. Now F external, when we remove the proportionality constant, there is a proportionality constant K. And this value of k in SI unit, it is equal to 1. It is experimentally calculated. k is equal to 1. Okay. Or theoretically, it is calculated that the value of k is equal to 1. In the net external force, it will be equal to how much? k into k is equal to 1. So, it will become delta p upon delta t. Okay. And if we will replace the value of delta p, delta p means p final minus p initial and delta t is the time so we can write down p final is the product basically the linear momentum is the product of mass and velocity so m into final velocity v if v is the final velocity m into u initial velocity divided by delta t okay and if mass is constant in this expression then f external will be equal to m we can take common common so it will become v final minus v initial divided by delta t so v final minus v initial final velocity minus initial velocity that will give you the change in velocity m into delta v and delta t change in velocity by change in time it will give you the acceleration so it will be equal to m a so f is equal to m a newton's first law of motion if v is equal to zero either the object is in the state of rest or uniform motion then external force will be equal to zero or external force is equal to zero then object is either in the state of rest or in the state of uniform motion this is known as translational equilibrium this case 
is known as translational equilibrium. Now what will happen if the net external force acting on the system is not equal to zero? So if the net external force is acting on a system, then there will be change in momentum with respect to time. And that net external force will be directly proportional to rate of change of momentum with respect to time. And this is the final expression. Net external force will be equal to m into a mass time acceleration of the object. Now third is Newton's third law. Newton's third law of motion. In Newton's third law of motion, we basically study about the action and reaction. Action and reaction. Okay. So Newton's third law of motion states that if two objects are interacting, okay. Now Newton's third law deals with the forces between two particles or two systems. If two objects or two particles are interacting or applying a force on each other, Suppose a body is applying a force X on the another body, then another body will also apply an equal and opposite force. So first is the force F external is equal to zero. Now F external is not equal to zero. Now if the force is acting when two objects are interacting with each other, then these two forces will be equal in magnitude. Suppose force applied by the object one on two is equal to F12, then second will also apply a force on first. F21. Okay, if two objects are interacting with each other, both are applying the force on each other. This is object one, this is object two. If one is applying a force on two, I'm writing F21 force on two by one, then two will also apply an equal and opposite force, F12. Direction of arrow you can see they are opposite, their magnitude is same. So this is known as Newton's third law. So this is the basic idea about Newton's first law, Newton's second law, Newton's third law. Quickly, I will recap. First, if the net external force acting on the system is equal to zero, object will be either in the state of rest or uniform motion. If the net external force is not equal to zero, there will be acceleration produced in the object and net external force will be basically directly proportional to rate of change of momentum with respect to time and F is equal to MA. And third is the force between two particles when they are interacting or when they are applying a force on each other. So both the particles will apply an equal and opposite force on each other. Action and reaction. Action reaction always exist in pair because two objects are interacting so it will exist in pair and their direction will be different. The, their direction will be on the opposite objects or other objects. Okay. Now suppose this force is applying a force on second, that is action, then other force, then other object which is applying the force on first, it will be reaction. So action, reaction acts on different objects. So this is all about the Newton's first law of motion. Thank you.